Hi, this is Dr. Luke Zaffa, and welcome to Gonzo Philosophy, a series about philosophical concepts in video games. Today I'm going to be visiting the undersea city of Rapture in the game Bioshock 2. The theory I'm going to discuss today is one of the most common and well discussed in philosophy. Deontological ethics is about the moral duties we have in life. You might have heard it said as do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, it's always wrong to murder, it's always wrong to steal, to lie, to hurt others. It's not concerned with outcomes, it's just concerned with the certainty that we must always fulfill our moral duties. Our setting for today is the now destroyed society of Rapture, a city at the bottom of the sea, and the year is 1958. It was initially designed as a libertarian paradise, but it fell into complete anarchy. Now it's leaking, full of dangerous drug addicts, and run by a pseudo-communist cult. Throughout this game, we're given two major sets of choices. The first is regarding the Little Sisters. In short, you have the choice whether or not to murder these little girls or not, for gameplay benefit. The choice is pretty simple, and it's really not possible to make a strong case for child murder here. So let's just move past this obvious moral choice and go to the heart of the game. Throughout the game, we encounter three significant antagonists. There's Grace Holloway, who is the elder of the Rapture slums, Stanley Poole, a former reporter, and Gilbert Alexander, who used to be a human scientist. Each of them causes a huge amount of difficulty for us and attempts to kill us on multiple occasions. But we can learn their stories, their motivations, and then we have the opportunity to pass judgment on them. Grace is an old woman who hates us very personally. We accidentally, but brutally, injured her. And she thinks that we also abducted her foster daughter, so she's pretty angry. I mean, you would too if someone stole your daughter and broke your arm. I remember you, monster. You stole Eleanor from me. Twisted that baby girl into a thing so sick it can't even die. And now you come swanning into my neighborhood, looking for me. Wrong turn, Tin Daddy. She sends a lot of guys after us to kill us for what she thinks we've done. Now, we didn't actually abduct her daughter, but she is convinced of it. She's also convinced that we're an unthinking monster. So, let's talk morality. What's our duty? Well, murder is right out. But self-defense can be justified under a deontological ethic. But when we come across her, she's surrendered, and defenseless, and no matter how you cut it here, she's unable to do anything to stop us from putting a rivet through her head. We're allowed to defend ourselves, but not to murder. This was Gilbert Alexander, and he has a really sad fate. Gil underwent a series of medical procedures and in the process became uh, some kind of giant fish thingy. Now, as you might expect, it's made him insane. Also, he's a drug addict. So, you know, it's kind of a rough day for Gil. This really wouldn't be an issue for you at all. You know, you could just leave the fish man to his thing. But he was sane when he left recordings for you asking for you to euthanize him. Voluntary suicide is tricky enough, but Fishgill is just asking you to leave him alone, give him some drugs maybe, and let him swim free into the ocean. He wants to spend the rest of his days blitzed out of his skull. Now, Fishgill does a try to occasionally kill you. I'm very disappointed in you, Delta. Destruction of a Fontaine asset is punishable by summary dismissal. Shall I simplify that for you? Fired! Fired! But it's because of a drug addled mind and not because of any actual malice. Now, moral duties. Well, euthanasia might be morally permissible if the person wanting to die gives consent. This is where it gets tricky though. Do we listen to the wishes of the human being? By the time you hear this, I will have armed this facility's defenses en masse. You, my friend, must therefore penetrate them and kill me. Please believe that if I could have done it myself... Or the fish person speaking to us now. You, you don't have to kill me, Delta. 
I'm sorry. Oh, please. I will go outside. I will live outside. Personally, I ended up concluding that our moral duty is to let him live. Regardless of what he was before, he's something new now, and this new being wants to live. The fact that the old person around is tragic, but we can't kill this new thing that's saying, I want to live. Lastly, we have Stanley, and he's my very favorite case in the game, because it's the most difficult one to choose. Now, this is the man who actually kidnapped Grace's daughter from earlier, and he's responsible for a whole lot of bad stuff in Rapture. He abducted a whole lot of little girls, he threw wild parties and spent through the treasury, embezzled money, and killed hundreds of people in an attempt to cover up the other crimes. He's a snivelly little weasel and he remains unapologetic, beyond the fact that he wishes he'd never got caught. How do we handle this then? You might be surprised to know that deontologists can allow for capital punishment, provided that it isn't cruel, and provided that it's done by the state. Unlike the other two cases though, this man has committed murder, many times, but there's a sticking point that there's no longer a government here to enforce or convict. Capital punishment is the duty of the state itself, and not random people or citizens. We can't take the law unto ourselves. So, what do we do, guys? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. Tell me what you think we should do in the comments. What would a deontologist say their moral duty is?